Well, you've heard my top 10 movies, and now it's time to get to the bottom 10. These are the 10 worst movies that I saw in 2015. Much like the top 10 list, I can only review a movie that I have actually seen. I've heard a lot of terrible things about Entourage, and I have no reason to doubt them, but I haven't seen the movie, so it won't be on the list. And of course, this list is entirely subjective. It is based purely on my own personal opinion and nothing else. If you disagree with it, that's fine. And I mentioned in my top 10 list that half the movies I picked ended up being reboots, remakes, or sequels. And it turns out the exact same thing happened with the bottom 10 as well. I don't know if that actually means anything. Maybe it means we finally achieved balance in the force or something. Who cares? Let's get right to it. Number 10, Jupiter Ascending. You knew this one had to be on there, didn't you? Oh, 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 what a spectacular train wreck this was. I mean, it looks gorgeous. It really does, and it's very ambitious, and for better or worse, there's a lot of creativity going on here, but it's just so stupid. Bees. The fucking bees. I, oh, God damn it. And Eddie Redmayne absolutely devouring the scenery. I create life! And I destroy it. It's a wonder he didn't destroy his career with this movie. And of course, this has probably the most useless heroine ever. All she does is get kidnapped and rescued, and she's supposed to be the star of the movie. What were they even thinking with that? Number nine, Pan. I will say it was a very bold move to have the Neverland Pirates sing Smells Like Teen Spirit and Blitzkrieg Bop. And by bold, I mean stupid. Much like Jupiter Ascending, it was visually amazing, but so very, very silly. The story is ridiculous. You have those oddly diverse natives that explode into pastel colored dust when they die. Still trying to figure that one out. You got Hugh Jackman hamming it up as Blackbeard. He was certainly having a lot of fun with this movie, and in a way, so did I, but probably not in the way the filmmakers intended. Now, I debated for a while over which movie was actually worse between Jupiter Ascending and Pan, and for a minute, I thought it should be Jupiter Ascending because at least in Pan, the female lead actually did something once in a while, but on the other hand, Jupiter Ascending has Eddie Redmayne. Yeah, Jupiter Ascending wins. Number eight, Aloha. How on earth was this movie even made? For one thing, it just looks so incredibly dull, which you wouldn't think would be possible for a movie that's set in freaking Hawaii, but they found a way to pull it off. Bill Murray is completely wasted on this movie. Emma Stone, who is normally very good, is just so annoying. You can tell she's trying to come across as quirky, but it just does not work. And of course, there was a big casting controversy surrounding her because the character she's playing is supposed to be one quarter Chinese and one quarter Hawaiian. Emma Stone. That Emma Stone. And for the life of me, I just cannot figure out what this movie was trying to do. One moment it's about the plight of the native Hawaiians, the next moment it's about nuclear freaking espionage, and then there's this romantic comedy element that starts with a love triangle and then turns into kind of a love rhombus, and there's a love child involved in here, and it's just trying to do all these different things and not doing any of them particularly well. And even Sony's marketing department had no idea what to do with this movie. You know how movie studios will often upload clips ahead of a movie's release to give you a little taste of what you might expect to entice you to see this movie? Well, Sony decided to just upload the first seven minutes of Aloha like including production logos and opening titles and all that. It's almost like they took the first chapter on the DVD and just threw that on YouTube. That right there is the marketing department just throwing their hands in the air and saying, we give up. We have no idea what to do with this movie to make people want to see it. And I can't say I blame them because they had nothing to work with. Number seven, Vacation. I really have to wonder if the people who made this movie even saw the original Vacation movies because this does not resemble them at all. This is Vacation in name only. Most of the jokes don't work, the handful that do get run into the ground, the kid was an annoying little shit. Really all it had was a lot of gross out humor and not much else. 
I did like the little cameo at the end with Chevy Chase. That was pretty funny, but that's about the only thing it had going for it. Number six, Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension. Believe it or not, I used to like this movie series. I thought it was a really neat idea and was done pretty well for what it was up until about the fourth movie, and that's when it seemed to me like they were running out of ideas. And despite running out of ideas on movie four, they decided to keep on going all the way up to movie number six. And their brilliant idea this time is to actually show us the monster, ghost, demon, thing, whatever the hell it is. Although, they really didn't show us anything worth looking at, because it just looks like a big, black, floaty blob of... stuff. And they made it 3D. Because of course they did. I know the horror genre loves its sequels probably more than any other genre of filmmaking, but once you have run out of ideas, there is nothing wrong with just going the fuck away. Fortunately, it looks like this will be the last Paranormal Activity movie until the inevitable remake 20 years later. Number five, Unfriended. I know this movie has its fans, and if you are one of them, that's fine. Go right ahead. But I don't know what y'all saw in this movie. I thought it was fucking terrible. It had a unique gimmick, I will give it that, but that's really the only thing it had going for it. You take away that gimmick, and all you have are a bunch of stupid-ass teenagers doing stupid-ass shit and getting their stupid asses killed. And it drags. It drags and drags. And how does it drag? It's only 80 minutes. 80 minutes of unlikable fuck weasels, and I just can't. Number four, Fant Forstick. A superhero movie where none of the superheroes actually act like superheroes until like the last five minutes. How did anybody think this would work? The characters were boring as hell with performances to match. Doctor Doom looks like a baked potato had sex with a glow stick. The story is a complete mess. The origin of the phrase, it's clobberin' time. Just, what the fuck? And I still don't understand how Sue Storm got her powers, but half the city of New York didn't inside that giant explosion. And the wig they put on her for the reshoots was so obvious, they just did not even try. Did anyone who worked on this movie give the slightest fraction of a damn? Anyone? Fox, if this is the best you can do, just give it back to Marvel. Just give it back. You can keep the X-Men, you're doing okay with that, but give up the Fantastic Four, please. Number three, Pixels. Yep, I finally got around to seeing this one. Oh boy, movie Bob was right. This was based on a short film that really should have stayed a short film if this was the best story they could come up with. It makes absolutely no sense. The casting is way off. Kevin James as the president, are you fucking kidding me? The romance between Adam Sandler and Michelle Monaghan did not work. Peter Dinklage and Sean Bean are wasted on this movie. And the pandering. Oh my God, the pandering. All nerds are great kissers because we appreciate it more. Fuck off, Adam Sandler. The visual effects were decent, I will give it that, and the soundtrack was okay. Adam Sandler does at least have decent taste in music. But otherwise, this was a complete mess. If I'm gonna watch a movie that brings back memories of the video games I played as a child, I will stick with Wreck-It Ralph, thank you. Number two, The Ridiculous Six. God damn it, Adam Sandler! How did you make a movie worse than Pixels? How? Pixels may have been a bust, but at least it looked like they were putting some actual effort into making that movie. Ridiculous 6 was just lazy. It's criminally unfunny, it's culturally insensitive, it's a waste of good talent, it's even a waste of bad talent. Taylor Lautner deserves better. Yes, I said it. And there's so much padding to get this thing through the two hour mark. I still don't know why that baseball scene was even in the fucking movie. Look, I'm sure Adam Sandler is a nice guy. I've heard as much. There must be a reason why so many people are willing to work with him. 
but he cannot make a decent movie to save his life. There's a reason why he had to sell this one to Netflix. None of the studios would touch this thing. And I am not about to blame them. I wouldn't touch it either. And now we come to the worst of the worst. The most god-awful movie I saw in 2015. Number one on the bottom 10. And that movie is going to be revealed on the next episode of Cinematic Excrement. Till then, I am the Smeghead, and Hollywood can suck it.